I just want to ask you a few questions, Bruno says, remaining in his position at the only exit of the dim alley, but relaxing his shoulders a bit. He inhales deeply from his cigarette, then exhales a plume of smoke into the air above him. The lamplights loom over the alley, behind Bruno, casting his burly silhouette against the dimness, while the leaner fowl is illuminated like a postcard, making it easy to catch the Zippo lighter when Fowl tosses it back to him. Thanks again, Fowl says, bluffing at being relaxed, though his eyes dart around in search of escape routes. Oh, you see, Bruno continues, I'm a private investigator, and some of my policemen buddies downtown wouldn't believe we've got flying cars buzzing around our fair city. You understand? Of course, Fowl replies, feeling exposed in the glare of the lamplight as he begins to inch slowly to his left. Bruno observes the action, but does not shift from his spot. He knows time is on his side. Sure enough, as if on cue, police sirens can now be heard from the main street beyond. Fall finishes his movement, running out of good options. He glances at the cigarette in his hand, the hand with the ring. Let me give you a hint, big guy, Fall says, taking another drag on his cigarette and raising his free hand to the other one. This world, this city you think you know so well. Let's just say there's more going on here than meets the eye, friend. Oh, and thanks for the smoke. Fowl twists the ring slightly, unleashing a rippling wave of invisible energy. The ground, walls, and even the air seem to vibrate, spreading outward from him like ripples on a lake. His clothing shifts, transforming from a dark, form-fitting suit into a looser fit, complete with a light-colored trench coat and matching fedora. What have you done? Bruno asks, feeling the wave of energy wash over him, noticing the change in the man's attire. Keep your hands where I can see him. Just making a slight adjustment to the morphic field around us, friend. Surrendering to the drama. Bliss's drama. It's a catch-22, though, Fall says, a bit dizzy, fighting to keep his thoughts straight. Morphic? What? That's what we call it. Anyway, it's my get-out-of-jail-free card, but it'll take me a little time to break free from the... from the damned script. Bruno takes a few steps forward, closing in on the man, seeing that Fowl seems on the verge of collapsing. Though his own mind feels clouded, Bruno shakes off the haze. What did you do? He asks, tucking his gun away as flashing lights dance along the alley walls behind him. It, uh, I mean, I, I'm succumbing to the old morph. Ring here, it allows me to use it, but the fielder uh, ends up using you too. It gives me a role to play and keeps me in their blind spot for a while. Fall is hunched over, his face cast in shadow. Bruno's hand on the man's shoulder helps steady him, keeping him upright. Only thing is, Fall continues, his voice altering in pitch, rhythm, volume, even accent. I nudged it with my ring so I could, uh, pick a decent role for myself, something I could make use of. Here come our police buddies now, right? That voice, Bruno thinks. I know that voice. However, there is no time to think further. Other voices are joining them. All right, all right. Everyone stand still. Hey, what's going on over here, Bruno? What are you doing here? We got reports of a disturbance in these. Lieutenant? Sir? What are you doing way over here? Lieutenant, Bruno says aloud, as Fall raises his head, allowing Bruno to see his face, a familiar face. Bruno's jaw drops. He is gobsmacked. That's all right, officer, eh? Fowl asks the policeman. It's, uh, it's Smitty, sir. Are you okay? Officer Smitty. Right. Everything's fine, Smitty. The, uh, 
Now, what was the granite tower's name? Just heard it, Bruno Wright. Me and uh, Mr. Bruno here, we're trying to find the driver of that machine back there. The one you'll find up on one of the roofs that way. Yeah, that's right, Sergeant Smitty. Bruno adds, placing emphasis on the sergeant part and locking eyes with fall as he says it. His gut tells him to play along, so he does. The lieutenant and I, I, yeah, we were out on the trail, but it went cold. That's right, so uh, sergeant, Fall replies to Smitty, nodding to Bruno in recognition. You and your men get to work on finding that roof. Can't miss it. It's got a car dangling over the edge. Now go on, Smitty. Mr. Bruno and I will finish our work here, and I'll see you boys back at the station. Yes, sir, Smitty says, briefly touching his hat. Braxton, he adds, nodding to Bruno. Bruno waits until Smitty is out of earshot. Then he asks in a hushed tone, Mr. Bruno, as he flicks his cigarette butt to the pavement. What's wrong? Fall asks. Did I mess up your name? It's Braxton. Bruno Braxton. And just who the hell are you, pal? You sure as hell ain't the lieutenant. No, sir. Not the Damon Handler I know. I mean, you look like him, sure. And sound like him, too. But mm, the lieutenant doesn't wear a scarab ring like... I've acquired this role, Bruno. And that's all you need to know. But thanks for your uh, aid. And why are you so hung up on scarabs? Fall raises his hand to his temple and shakes his head, feeling the role of the persona he's assuming taking over, its algorithmic tentacles worming through his mind. I... I won't be myself for a short while. I'll end up like you lot, probably nihilism in a trench coat. But anyway, when my uh, senses do come back to me, I'll um, be in... Oh, that's right. I won't be in touch. I won't be needing you at all. So I guess this is so long, Gumshoe, Fall says, securing his trench coat and walking past Bruno. Bruno pivots and calls to the back of the other man. It's Egyptian. You know that. Fowl turns to face Bruno. What's Egyptian? Your ring. The scarab. It's Egyptian. So, what's it to you? And why the hell should I care? Fall snaps, turning away and continuing toward the entrance of the alley, leaving Bruno to talk to himself. Well, I care. There's a synchronicity at play here. I can smell it. A synergy. Me and Egypt go way back, stranger, Bruno says, flicking open his Zippo lighter. After lighting another cigarette, he closes the lid, the click pleasing to him. Me and Egypt go way back. Bruno watches the long shadow of the stranger exit the alley, accompanied by the other officers. He feels impotent, able to do nothing but watch them go, leaving him far from his comfortable cab and standing alone at the end of a dingy dead-end alley.